Tandy. I don't even have a Hi, This is Marty Pearson and Sue Painter back with the online business reality show, Marty and Sue's Peep Show, where we pull back the curtains on our businesses and give you the inside scoop of what's working and what's not. Uh, we have a question that was submitted by one of our viewers. Uh, Sue, you want to read that question? Do you have a handy still? Or? Uh, the question was from Joanne, and she wants to know, what was your success with your Memorial Day sale? Because she did try some of the things you suggested and said that she sold. She did make some money over Memorial Day. So okay. she had a sale and she wanted to know the results of that. So this is for you, Joanne, when you listen to the replay. Oh my gosh, I don't know if this is going to work. There's a guy here pressure washing our house. I don't know. We'll see how the noise okay. level goes. I can't hear it. We're probably okay. Okay. Um, yeah, um, just to give everybody an idea of what I did is I sent out, I had some um, recorded versions of some energy sessions that I'd done on different topics. And so I went the angle of, you know, it's Memorial Day is about freedom and, you know, you need to be free of all the procrastination and the things that keep you stuck, that keep you from moving forward. So I did a 50% sale on some audios that I had of sessions, group sessions that I'd done. So um, actually, I only got about two sales out of that, which wasn't a whole lot. But I ended up selling two of my product creation programs. So I, it, dollar value, it'll end up being about $1,500 worth of sales off of that. So um, I think it put, put me back in front of my audience again. So even though they didn't buy exactly what I put in front of them, <laughs> I guess. I I have found that to be true though. You can make an offer and people will buy something besides what you offered. Really? You have that happen? They'll figure. Yeah. So whatever. I, I'm fine. If they wanted to buy that bigger program, that's, that's totally fine with me. <laughs> you have no complaints, right? Yeah. I'm not going to cry. So. Cool. Okay. Well, so Joanne, that's the answer to your question. And um, we hope you enjoy hearing her results when you hear the replay. Yeah. All right, and then uh, you have uh, something you wanted to talk about, the 10. Yeah, I, um, so as you guys can see, it looks different behind me than it did last week. I have migrated northward to Nashville, so now I'm sitting in my Nashville Confident Marketer office, which is a sunroom, actually, so that's why there's so much light around. Um, and I have so many, many, many bookshelves filled with all these notebooks of all this training and coaching that I've taken over the years and all these courses that I've bought, all these training programs that I've bought. And I've decided that, um, you know, the confident marketer is a decade old now and it's time for me to be purging some of that stuff. So my goal is to take one bookshelf a day and go through all the notebooks on it and decide whether to keep or pitch or maybe just keep little piece parts. And I ran across something that by a woman whose name is Cherie Keys, K-E-Y-S, and she, a long time ago, I coached with her. She had an association that is now defunct, I think, called the Association of Web Entrepreneurs. Anyway, she had put this little thing together about the top 10 mindsets that you have to have to be successful as an internet entrepreneur. And I was just struck by the fact that even though this has been sitting around in my office probably close to a decade, these 10 things still really ring true to me. So I thought I would share them with the people who are watching today, Marnie, and then we could, you can see if you agree with them too. So here they are. The first one is you must be passionate. And I really, I really do agree with that. You have, to, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. If you don't have the passion for it and you don't really see where it's going to take you, then when something comes up that's too hard to do, you just decide you don't want to do it and you lay back and you procrastinate. And that's because you're not really energetic and passionate about what it is you want to offer. Do you agree with that, Marnie, or no? Oh, I definitely agree. I think you've got to be excited about what you're doing. Otherwise, you don't have the... There's so much discipline involved yeah. in a business that if you're not passionate about it, you won't be disciplined enough to right. keep doing it. I agree. And so the second one is you must be a risk taker. And I definitely like bow to that one because the thing that I get into trouble with the most with clients is I end up getting clients sometimes who are risk averse. And this is something that I see coming up with people who I'm old enough now to call the quote younger generation 
people who are in their early 20s and early 30s, they have come through a school system in which they were, everybody won, nobody lost, everybody got a trophy no matter how bad. <laughs> they learned not to take risk. We've taught our kids in school how not to take risk. And consequently, they want to be assured that they're going to succeed before they try something. And you cannot own a business with that kind of a mindset. Or, well, let's put it this way, you can own one, but it's not going to be very successful. So, yes, I agree 100%. You must be a risk taker. Marnie, what do you think? Totally. It was funny. Just within the last three days, um, a friend of mine who is a police officer told me, you are the brave, a really brave woman. And I'm like, brave? He's like, yeah, you take risks every day as an entrepreneur. Because, I mean, your entire livelihood, everything that, you know, you're, I'm sitting here with five kids in my house and I've got to support them on my wits, you know? So it's definitely, yeah. I never really thought about it that way, but it's true. It, you've got to be brave. You've got to take, take risks. So. You do have to take risks. You know, in my case, when I started my first business, which was the massage clinic, um, you know, I walked away from a, a corporate six figure job in order to go to massage school and start my own practice. And, you know, I know sometimes Bill probably thought I was nuts. It was a huge ding to our income. It was a huge risk to take, huge risk. But I knew that if I stayed in that corporate world and worked from eight to five every day, I was going to probably get sick and die of some dread disease or something. And I saw people up and down the hall doing that. And that's what really concerned me. So anyway, risk taking. So number three is you must be creative. So Marnie, what's your take on that? <laughs> Definitely got to be creative because you got things change so fast, especially if you're, well, it's about web entrepreneurs, right? So the internet is changing all the time. Yep. And so you have to be really creative to try new things, come up with new ideas. Um, I think creativity is just probably at the core of it, really, of being able to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fourth is you must love to learn. And I definitely think that that's true. I think all, all true entrepreneurs, if it's in your blood, you're always wanting to learn. I'm a lifelong learner. I have been since I can remember even before I could walk. And I still, that's why I have absolutely 15 bookshelves filled with training classes and coaching programs and things because I'm always wanting to learn. Yeah. If anything, I, I buy so much stuff I can't implement it all in a timely manner, which I know you're better at that. The person I think the best is at it, Lynn Terry. She doesn't buy anything unless she marks off her calendar and she can implement it from soup to nuts. And I really admire her for that. Yeah, that's that's good to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number five, you must focus. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Owning your own business is not for squirrels. <laughs> no. A lot of us, Go ahead. A lot of us who own businesses tend to be kind of squirrely because we get idea phobia or idea phoria. We get turned on by all these different ideas that come to our minds at odd hours of the night. But you really have to be willing to focus. And sometimes, you know, this is my rant about this. I have had clients before who have said, well, I want my own business because I want to be home with my kids. Well, okay, but you still have to work. And it doesn't mean, oh, 15 minutes in between when um, I pick them up from school and when I start dinner, that's not going to work. You have to really respect your time and your boundaries and, and not use your kids as an excuse as to why you haven't gotten anything done. And I see people do that, which is unpopular for me to say. I get... I get it put to me all the time. Well, you're not a mom. You don't know how it feels. Well, too bad, so sad. You're not going to have a business if you don't pull some boundaries around it. So that's my deal. You're the mom. You can answer that one. Yeah, I think the focus is the secret. And, and I'm not always the best at that because I tend to get lost on Facebook playing around or whatever. But if um, you don't have to spend as much time sometimes, if you will at least decide you know, say three business building activities you're going to do for the day. Something with a really good focus that's productive work is worth more than hours sitting, you know, just randomly checking things out on the web. I mean, I think a lot of people, me included, we kind of fool ourselves into thinking that we're working when we're really just surfing around, <laughs> you know, 
But um, I mean, you can learn by looking at sites and seeing how other people are doing things, but I think it needs to be done with that focus and that purpose. And uh, you can motivate me to do that, that more. <laughs> that means no interruptions. That means really sitting down, shutting the door and focusing on those two or three things. And that will be productive. But if you constantly let yourself be interrupted by everything that goes on around you, you'll not be productive and focused. So that's the I once, I once heard Adam Urbanski say that he doesn't do an idea that he can't implement in 72 hours. I heard, I've heard him say that too. Yeah. And, and I, I think heard, that's important because yeah. you get at least the bulk of it's done. I do the same. I have the same thing. I have this like laser focus where two or three days I crank out, get it done. You know, and um, that's where my, the bulk of my successes come from. Right. Yeah. You can work really, really intently and then take a little bit of time off. I heard that um, Barbara Corcoran, you know, who's on Shark Tank and, and, and developed a big real estate business for herself in New York. I really admire her. I've learned a lot from listening to her on Shark Tank over the years. And she said, when I was building my business, my kids knew that unless they were calling me to report that their sibling had died. They were not to interrupt me. And she's taken a lot of flack for saying that, but you know, she had, she had good childcare for them and she had everything they needed. And she knew that she could support them best by focusing and building up her multi-million dollar business instead of listening right when they thought they had to say it to every little thing that came down the pipe. And in fact, she's a wonderful model for her kids. So, you know, you have to think about those kind of things too. It's great. I like to see parents be really good models for their children and model what they'd like to see their kids do out in the world. Constant interruption isn't going to get them there. And it's not a good model for their kid either. So um, six, you must serve others. I like that one. Yeah, because if you, if you don't, you're not going to make any money. For <laughs> well, you have to think about what you're going to offer and how is it in service to others? How does it help them get where they want to go? And if what you're offering doesn't help people get where they want to go, they're not going to be interested in it. So you do have to be in service to others. And people sometimes talk about that, especially I think in the coaching industry. Uh, I mean, I really do care about what happens with my clients and I tend to keep up with my clients and, it, and I, know, I know what their family situation is and I know what it means to them to make it. And I really, I really want to be in service to them to do what that idea is in their mind and be able to go out in the world and support themselves, you know, doing that. So I, I agree with that. The seventh is you must value freedom. And boy, for me, freedom is my number one reason. I don't want to have to show up to work for anybody, anytime. I want to be the master of my own fate or the mistress of my own fate. And I love my freedom. I love that I can sit here and work or I can go down to the clubhouse and work or I can go to Starbucks and work or I can be on a plane and work. It doesn't matter. I've even worked with clients from a hospital bed before. And I just, I love that freedom. And Marnie, I know you love it too. Yeah. Yeah. And with freedom comes responsibility. It does. You have, it goes back to some of these other things we've talked about that you have to, to take the responsibility, the buck stops with you, you know, yeah. but that if that freedom is really valuable to you, you will do whatever yeah. it takes. Like you're, you know, you're planning to go and work some of the summer in Utah, right? Are you still planning to do that or no? Still planning yeah. On it. yeah. And so, you know, Marty gets to do that. I work part of the year in Florida and part of the year up here in Nashville. And, you know, we might change that in a couple of years, who knows, but we do have the ultimate freedom. So, and I really enjoy that. And number eight is you must build a team and delegate. <laughs> and I do believe that people sometimes are hesitant to, they think too small and they think they can handle everything. So they're trying to do their own bookkeeping, clean their own house, do their own childcare, run their own business, do their own graphics work, learn how to build their own website. And that's not focus on what you're really brilliant at and what you do best and then find support for the things that are not your brilliance. I don't do the techie stuff. Marty does more techie stuff than I do. I'm not good at the techie stuff. It's not where my, it's not where I'm really smart. So it's better for me to have hire that done. Marnie can figure out more of the techie stuff. She's got a head for it more, but then Marnie might call me up and say, well, help me with this marketing strategy. Should I do this or should I do that? I'm more of a strategist and she's a good strategist too, but she also has that tech head. You're a tech head, Marnie. 
I say that in, with all love. You're a tech, I couldn't do without tech heads. But don't you agree that you do have to have a support team, even if that means somebody to clean your house, you do have to have a support team. You can't do it all yourself. Yeah. Back when I started Ideal Marketers, I ran it all on my own for several years. And then once I hired a virtual assistant, it just mushroomed and took off big time. Yeah. Um, all of those little consistent things that had to be done. Cause I'm not, I don't like just the minute detail of the consistent stuff. I like the big idea, the launch, the, you know, the bursts of stuff. And so having somebody come in and do those parts of my business that kept it all running smoothly day to day, just really mushroomed my uh -huh. business at that point. Your, your business will grow very quickly when you do that. But it isn't just the hiring of the person. There's three parts to that. You have to hire them. You have to be willing to delegate and delegate effectively. So you need to know to tell them what to do. And um, um, you have to develop systems so that you can delegate and pull things off. So you have to use that time that you freed up for yourself to go and do something that you can monetize so that you're making money in that free time that you've. So I see people say, I'm going to grow a team. And then they hire people. And then they don't lead those people. They, those people have no idea where they're going or what they're supposed to be doing. And then they go and poke around on Facebook for all that time that they have freed up. So they're not monetizing their time. And then guess what? They don't have the money to pay the staff. And then they say, I can't afford to have staff. I have to do it all myself. And then the whole circle starts over again. Can't do that. So yeah, you have to be willing to delegate and that means systems and that means leadership. And number nine is you must be a big thinker. I, I do agree with that when you have to really think broad and out of the box, you have to have a different solution to what it is that you're doing. You have to have a solution to a problem that is different and unique. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of um, masterminding or having friends like, like we're friends. I mean, to have somebody that helps you look at your situation from a different perspective. A lot of times I'll even, talk to people in a completely different field who know nothing about web stuff at all. Um, right. Cause they're going to come at it from an angle I haven't thought of. Uh, the more perspectives I think the yeah. better. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one thing I enjoyed so much when I went to Scottsdale to Allie's repower workshop, you know, there were 24 people there. I did know some of them, but some of them were multi-million dollar entrepreneurs from fields totally different than mine, technical fields, mechanical fields, food industry field, totally different. But still when they talked about what they had done to build their business or what their plans were to leapfrog, you know, up and over the issues they were having in their businesses, that mindset and that ability to think uh, both strategically and tactically, was just wonderful to listen to and I could learn from that. So you do have to be a big thinker, that's for sure. And then 10, the top 10 one, this is one of my favorite ones is you must evolve. And I, I was really kind of startled when I saw that that was there. And I think that's part of Sherry's uh, brilliance, the lady who wrote these 10 is, you know, you and I have talked about reinvention and, and shifting gears and it really is evolution. We evolve as business owners. And that is a normal part of ha having a business, which is what I was teaching when I was at NAMS in Atlanta back in March, I guess. And Marnie, you know, you have evolved. You had to evolve because you lost your business quickly when internet rules change. So we've both evolved and we continue to evolve. And I think that's just key. It's just absolutely key to normalize evolution. Right. Change is just part of it. You have to yes. embrace change, not fight it. You can't, you know, something in that one made me think of this, this book. I got it for free. He was giving it away. I asked um, Brian Levesque. I don't know if that's how he says it. Um, he was talking about how sometimes starting over at the bottom can be the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, he had, he took some big leap and um, he was making money off of some product that was telling people how to make jewelry out of Scrabble tiles. Oh, um, and then the fad was gone, you yeah. know, and he I had those loop thing, loom things or that, that kids are into now. Is that fad gone yet or not? I don't know. I'm not up on it, but, um, so sometimes just starting over from scratch. I mean, it, 
you have to go back to the root principles of success. It helped this guy develop a formula right. that he can use across any industry. So hold that book up again in case people want to buy it. You can go. Yeah. You can buy it on Amazon. It's not free yeah. anymore because I just looked it up after Marnie told me about it, and I think the Kindle version is like seven bucks. Yeah, it's Ask by Ryan. Of course, it's going to be Mirror Image, I guess, for you. Is it Mirror Image or just no? It? No, it's not Mirror Image. Okay. Ryan, Ryan Levesque. Levesky? Levesky, is that how he says it? Anyway, so um, he has a good story. And um, I, I got, you know, I know a lot of times you don't want to wade through somebody's story. He's got the books divided in half. So if you don't want to hear how he developed the formula, the story of that, you can go straight to part two and just get into the formula. Uh, I haven't started, well, I've kind of gotten into the formula, but not enough to speak intelligently. But, um, one of the things that he brought out is a lot of times we ask our um, our customers, you know, what would you like to see or whatever. And he brought out that like Steve Jobs said something like, people don't know what they want until they see it. Amen. I believe that totally. He said, the better question is, what do you not like? Like if Henry Ford said, if he had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. You know, but if, if he had asked them, let's say, um, what do you not like about traveling with horses? They might have iterated all of the thing, you know, you got to stop and feed them or they're not fast enough or, you know, or whatever. So asking people what they don't like yeah. about something will actually pull out more information than asking them what they're looking for. So that was well, a tip. That's, really, that's brilliant. That's your, that's everybody's little golden gem for today. I think that's really brilliant. Yeah. What do you not like? Mm-hmm. Cause I've seen so many and I've done it myself. I put, you know, I've done something on survey monkey. What would you like to learn about in the coming year? And people don't really, they can't think if you say, what are you not liking about your business right now? They'll tell you what you're not liking. And from there you can talk about, well, here's what you can do. You can solve that problem. Right. Yeah. And then you were talking about his story being in the first half of the book. I, I want to, um, if he ever, listens to this or watches this, I want to compliment you for putting your story in the first half of the book and separating it from the meat of what you're teaching and allowing people to opt out of the story if you don't want to read it. Because my rant for the day is, um, I've listened to a couple of webinars in the last couple of days, or should I say, I've listened to the first part of a couple of webinars. If it's an hour long webinar and at the 20 minute mark, you are still trying to tell me your story. I am done. I am off of there. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. If I want to know your story, I'll call you up and ask you or interview you. Thank you very much. If you've promised I'm going to teach you a four part funnel, I by God want to hear that. And I want to hear it in the first 10 minutes so that I can figure out if it's worth my time to stick around. So I was on, a, I mean, this actually, this is a webinar from a friend of mine. And 20 minutes into it, he's still mucking around about his, you know, past history and where he got, to, how he got to was to where he was today. I, I don't care. I just want to know what is it that you have for me that's useful in my business. And maybe I'll want to hear the backstory if I use this thing and it works. I'll be like, well, how did you come to develop this? And then I'll be ready to hear your story. I know that there is a formula to teach webinars. I have that formula too. And right in the formula, it says spend five to 10 minutes spilling your guts about your story. A, cut it to five minutes. B, cut it to five minutes. C, cut it to five minutes. Do not go on and on. Drives me nuts. I will hang up and you have lost a sale. So there you go. That's my rant for the day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cut it to five minutes. <laughs> yeah, five minutes. I can hear all I need to know about your checkered past in five minutes. <laughs> And you know, talking about free books, I got a free book too. This is Russell Brunson's newest book, Dot Com Secrets. Hmm. Have you read this? I haven't read that one. Russell is one smart cookie, and I have followed him for a while, and then didn't follow him for a while because I kind of went off in a different direction. But this is upgrade. This is his updated Dot Com Secrets book, and you know, I know a whole lot about internet marketing, and I usually get one nugget out of a book. I like started, I was on a plane when I started reading this and I pulled out my trusty spiral binder here that I take everywhere with me. And I have pages, 
pages of notes from this book and I haven't even finished it yet because I kind of got interrupted when we did our little migration last Wednesday and I've been real busy since but I don't know that this is free any longer but it's probably not very expensive and it's it's really if you do market on the internet and you want to understand funnels and how to set up funnels how to set up your funnels it's it's a really good book I'll have to get that one yeah so at any rate that's that what else? Do you have anything else to hold forth about today or are we done? Do uh, we have anybody in the audience who's asking a question, Marty, by any chance? Take a look and see. I don't see any questions. Okay. Well, y'all always know that you can come live and ask questions in the chat box. And you can also let us give you a link to where you could actually, up to nine of you could actually join us live on the show and have a discussion, which we ought to do sometime, Marnie. And then um, also you can send a question ahead of time to sue at confidentmarketer.com and we will read your question and answer it on the show. Um, and we're actually trying to get our viewership up a little bit more for the Peep Show. So if you guys are watching and you know folks who would like to listen in to this kind of stuff, please send them to confidentmarketer.com slash Peep Show, P-E-E-P -E -E Show. And they can put in their name and their email address and then they'll get the little uh, emails that we send you guys about Peep Show today and here's how to join and, and the replay links and so forth. We actually, this is I think our 34th show, so we have all these hours of, of us talking about our business and they're live on YouTube and all you have to do is sign up to get them and you'll, you know, you'll learn from listening to us and from listening to us answer other people's questions. So um, we need to feel like you're out there so that we will be motivated to keep doing this because we don't want to feel like we're just talking to nobody in the whole wide world. That's a bad feeling. <laughs> And our next peep show is, um, I know we have it on the schedule for next week. Let me see if I can figure it out real quick. Um, hang Monday. On. Monday on the 1st at 1 o'clock. Okay. June the 1st at 1 Eastern, right? Yeah. 1 Eastern. Yeah. So that'll be 10, I guess, specific time. And noon, my time. I'm, I'm messed up all week long. I keep getting on calls at the wrong time because I'm so used to being in the Eastern time zone. And by the time I get to them, they're half over because guess what? I'm no longer in the Eastern time zone. I'm in the Central time zone. <laughs> I told Bill, we need to settle one place or the other because I don't like going back and forth between time zones all the time. It drives me nuts. Yeah, that'd be aggravating. Yeah, exactly. Where am I that day? Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling better because last week when we did the show, you were really still feeling under the weather. Yeah. You're feeling yeah. better. Now, if it would just quit raining in Tennessee, <laughs> I would be very happy. Otherwise, I might turn around and go back to Florida. <laughs> yep. It's rained every day. We've been here since Wednesday night, and it has rained every day. Mm. It rained all day Memorial Day. It has rained all day today. So, at least we had a pretty day uh, Saturday and Sunday. It was really good. Mm. Yeah. We, we had rain. Or maybe we had a little bit of sunshine set Saturday, I think. So, but at any rate, we will see you next week. Anything else you want to add, Marnie? No. Send us your questions. We're here. Pick our yeah. brains. You know, we're here to pick. You know, have our brains picked. So go for it. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. It's it's good to see you, Marnie. I'm glad you're feeling better. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye.